الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين ما بعد in our previous classes we have been discussing a شرط الرابع the fourth the fourth condition for the conditions of the correctness of the salah and that was the issue the author he mentioned rahimahullah ta'ala with regards to raful hadathi and he says wuhu al wudu al ma'ruf removing the hadith and this is al wudu al ma'ruf i mean this is what he's referring to in uh, this particular condition rahimahullah ta'ala and in this condition here the fourth condition he mentioned a number of affairs any you know, that are related to this one specifically with regards to this tahara the tahara of removing the hadith the purification of, uh, of removing the hadith and we have seen that in this particular condition along with that the author he mentioned the conditions of al wudu and uh, that they are ten and he mentioned likewise the arkan or the furud the pillars of al wudu also and he mentioned that they are six and we've seen that we can count them as six or we can count them as eight in uh, a bit more detail and likewise the author he had mentioned wajibuhu and the obligation of wudu and we have seen that that is one and according to the uh, position of the Hanabila and the author and that which he had mentioned rahimahullah ta'ala and after this with regards to this condition the author he moves on to mention nawaqid al-wudu nawaqid al-wudu the invalidators of of the ablution but before we move on because of uh, the importance of the topic we'll go ahead and finish some uh, beneficial Masail, some beneficial issues that were related to the wudu, and from that is what the people of Nar, as they mention, al mashu ala al khufain, al mashu ala al khufain, wiping on uh, on the leather socks, wiping on the leather socks. So this is something that is established in the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and in this chapter in the books of fiqh, many times they will mention this the the title. Uh, they will mention this issue in this title Babu al Mashi al Khufain. And because this is the origin with regards to this issue. But also, you will find that sometimes the Fuqaha they may be more general in naming the title. And they may say Al Mashu ala al Ha'il. Al Mashu ala al Ha'il. Instead of wiping over the, 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 leather, the leather socks, which is the origin with regards to this affair, they will say instead Al Mashu ala. Al Ha'il, wiping on a cover, wiping on a cover, because there are a number of affairs that are related likewise to this, or that go along with this particular issue, the issue of wiping on the leather socks. So included in that are other affairs that are covering uh, the feet and also other body parts as well. So along with wiping on the leather socks, which is known as Al Khufan, also we have the issue of Al Mashu Ala Al Jawrabain, wiping on the on the socks, any of the socks which are made from cotton that are made for cotton and, and, and the likes, or wool, so on and so forth. So this is along in the same chapter. And likewise, we have the issue of al-mashu ala al-jabira, wiping on the cast or the bandage that is on a person's body because of an ailment or because of a wound. So this is also included in this particular issue. Also, there's the issue of al-mashu ala al-imama, wiping on the imama. And likewise, for the women, al-mashu ala al-khimar, wiping on the woman's head covering. So all of these issues they'll be mentioned in the chapter on Mesuad al Khufain. Or sometimes the people of Naraj they'll bring a more inclusive chapter title and they say Al Mashu Ala al Ha'il. Al Mashu Ala al Ha'il. Al Ha'il is a barrier. So the Khufan, they're a barrier that will be between wiping and the person's skin. The Jawraban, the socks, likewise are a barrier. They're a Ha'il. And also the Jibira, and likewise the Imama, and likewise the khimar, these are all considered uh, barriers or covers that will be between uh, the person's skin whenever he's going to wipe on them. But we find that in the legislation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there is specific rulings with regards to these affairs. So because of the importance and likewise the great benefit of uh, reviewing these rulings, we touch on them this evening. Asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to aid us and to uh, make that which we mentioned beneficial. So we have al mashu ala al khufain al mashu ala al khufain This is something that is established that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in times he would wear the khuf. He would wear the khuf, 
and the people of Nara, as they mention, al khuf ma tustaru bihi al qadamu wa al kaabani wa yikunu min al jildi wa yikunu min al jildi gariban in al fuqaha. Al khuf is the that which is covering the foot and the ankles, the foot and the ankles. This is an important point. And with regards to the definition of the khuf, any meaning it's like a sock. It's a garment that will go on the foot, but normally or gener generally in the term of the fuqaha, it's made from leather. It's made from a type of hide. This one will be considered a khuf. The khuf is like what we know today as a sock, but normally or generally in the understanding of the fuqaha, it's made from a hide, the hide of an animal, like the hide of a cow or the hide of a sheep and the likes like this. And the likes like this. So this one is a, little, is a bit more thick than the socks that we know today. And this is the origin of this particular masala. And he wiping on this particular type of a sock. Along with that is wiping on the other types of socks. And they're known as the jawrab. We have the khuf. This is the leather sock. This is the leather sock from the hide. And we also have the jawrab. Al jawrab is uh, the sock that we know. The well-known sock that we know that is made from cotton. So that issue will come yani bi idnillahi ta'ala but now we discuss the issue of al mashru ala al khufain so this is something the people of Naraj they have agreed about it's been narrated from al hasan al basri rahimahullah ta'ala rahimahullah ta'ala he died in the year 110 he's from the tabi'in from the best of them from the best of them and he mentioned that he heard narrations about the wiping on the khuf from more than 70 companions from more than 70 companions so this is something that is well known and something that is agreed upon even to the extent that some of the people of Naraj they have mentioned this particular masala. We are masala fiqhiyya. Masala, masala fiqhiyya amaliyya. This is from the, the issues uh, of fiqh jurisprudence, from the actions of the deen. From the actions of the deen. Some of the people of Naraj they will mention the likes of this issue, particularly in books of Aqidah, in books that they will entitle as Sunnah, and the likes like this, clarifying the proper creed and belief and methodology and manhaj of a Muslim. Yani in his life and his creed and belief specifically and they'll mention this issue in the likes of some of these works uh, because it had become known that the people of innovation that had opposed this particular issue so now become as if it's a principle to be able to identify the people of innovation they're the ones who go against that and oppose that and they will not do that as for the people of the sunnah then they are aware of this ruling and they're aware of this issue and they implement it and they apply it in their life in the manner that is legislated they will not deny it they will not deny it. So this is something that, that is established. So we see what the khuf is. Al khuf ma tustaru bihi al qadamu wal kaaban. Al khuf ma tustaru bihi al qadamu wal kaabani wa yikunu min al jildi gariban in al fuqaha. Al khuf is the that which is covering the foot and the ankles. The foot and the ankles. This is an important point. And with regards to the definition of the khuf. The khuf is uh, something that is worn on the foot it covers the foot and the ankles and it's made from the hide normally and this is the general understanding uh, of the fuqaha as for the jawrab then it's the same it's very similar so the jawrab which is the regular sock this is also like the khuf it is something that covers the foot and the ankles and when we mention the foot, we mean the foot and the ankles, uh, but it is from cotton and it's from wool and the likes like this. So this is the difference between the two. So the, the, the main point now that we're discussing first and foremost is the issue of the khuf, because this is the asl in the chapter. And after that, the affairs, they return back to this particular principle. Back to this particular principle. So the people of Naraj, they have mentioned that al mashru ala المسح على الخفين ثبت بالكتاب والسنة والإجماع المسح يعني هذا الحكم بجواز المسح على الخفين ثبت بالكتاب والسنة والإجماع that this is something that is established in the book there's the evidence يعني establishing this ruling in the book meaning in the Quran and likewise in the Sunnah and as well as the consensus of the people of knowledge so in the book of Allah سبحانه وتعالى we have discussed a particular verse with regards to the importance of wudu, and it is known as ayat al wudu, ayat al wudu. Who knows that verse from the youth? Who knows ayat al wudu from anybody who's under thirty? Really under forty, huh? We're gonna go down some. Now I'm in the back.
الله على سفر أو جاء أو جاء أحد منكم أو أو جاء أحد منكم من الغائب أو لابس من النساء فلم تجدوا ما أن تتيمموا سعيدا طيبا فامسحوا بوجوهكم وأيديكم من فامسحوا بوجوهكم وأيديكم من ما يريد الله أن يجعل عليكم من حرج ولكن يريد ليطهركم وليتم نعمته عليكم لعلكم تشكرون أحسنت أحسنت هذه آية الوضوء آية الوضوء هذه سورة آية الوضوء يعني أن سورة المائدة أن سورة المائدة The shahid here for this particular point is whenever Allah he mentions يعني we mention the portion of the, of the shahid يعني again and we have been studying this portion for the last few classes فاغسلوا وجوهكم وايديكم إلى المرافق وامسحوا برؤوسكم و وأرجو لكم we talked about this uh, the, all, of, all of the مقصولات all of the things that are washed they have a they have a فتحة they have a فتحة they're all mansub they're all mansub they have a فتحة وأرجو لكم and he, so whenever we say وأرجو لكم this is meaning that this أرجو لكم this word here is related back to the فغسلو so in the first reading that we're all we're, we're aware of any that we have memorized in the قراءة الحفظ the, the word arjul has a fatha, yani it's mansub, ma'tuf ala fagsilu. So therefore it's related to washing. So this is the order to wash the foot and this is the origin. But likewise there's another qira'a mutawatira. But also there's another qira'a mutawatira. So there's also another well known and accepted and reliable recitation of this verse. Uh, and it is wa arjulikum. Wa arjulikum. And there's been a number of different antojihat and the likes with regards to this particular recitation. And from them is that arjul here, arjulikum, wa arjulikum now is related to al masa famsahu bi ru'usikum wa arjulikum. So if we read it with a fatha, it's related to faqsilu. And if we read it to a, a with we read it with the kasra, it's related to wamsahu. Wamsahu. So here now there's an indication of wiping. So based upon this, we will understand that this reading it says, uh, wa wash your faces and your hands to the elbows and wipe your heads and feet and you wipe your head and wipe your feet wipe your head and wipe your feet so whenever we put both of the recitations together we see that this is clarifying the ruling and the state of the foot the state of the foot with regards to purification and making evolution there's two there's two situations either the foot will be covered or the foot will be uncovered the foot will be covered or the foot will be uncovered the foot will be covered with a hoof or with a jawrab with the leather sock or with a regular sock or it will be uncovered or be uncovered so if the foot is uncovered the obligation is to wash it the recitation this is the origin with regards to this the obligation of washing the foot this is the original fundamental principle with regards to the wudu except whenever there is another circumstance so the other reading comes along and the meaning indicating the situation whenever the foot is covered whenever the foot is covered. So it's allowed to wipe the foot whenever it's covered with conditions, with conditions. So when we gather between both recitations, when we gather between both recitations, arjulakum wa arjulikum. Arjulakum wa, we say wa arjulakum wa arjulikum. When we gather between both recitations, this is an indication of the circumstance of the foot, whenever it's uncovered and whenever it's covered. So whenever it's uncovered, we read it, arjulakum. This is indicating the obligation of washing. If we were to read it, wa arjulikum, this is indication whenever it's covered, the person is wearing the sock, and it will be wiped. And it will be wiped. So this is a clarified and mentioned in the, in the Quran from this aspect. Also, in the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, as has been mentioned, there, there has come mutawatira, a number, uh, a number of narrations. And from them is that which is collected by Al-Bukhari and Muslim from the Hadith of Jarir. Ibn Abdullah al-Bajri radiyallahu anhu annahu bala thumma tawadda'a wa masaha ala khufayhi thumma qama fa salla fa su'ila fa qal so Jirir ibn Abdullah al-Bajri radiyallahu anhu has mentioned that he passed urine and then after that he made the wudu and uh, he wiped on his on his two khuf he wiped on the khufayn and then he went and he prayed then he went and he prayed immediately in this manner and then uh, the people they asked him about that and he said, رَأَيْتُ نَبِيَ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ صَنَعَ مِثْلَ هَذَا I've seen the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم doing the same thing. And in some words, رَأَيْتُ نَبِيَ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمَ طَوَضَّعَ وَمَسَّ عَلَى خُفَيْنِ ثُمَّ صَلَّى I saw the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم making wudu and he wiped on, his, on, his, on the khufayn. And then he went for the prayer. 
and then he went for the prayer. So this is something that is well known. It has come likewise in this wording uh, in Bukhari and Muslim. They said, وَقَالَ إِبْرَاهِيمُ فَكَانَ يُعْجِبُهُمْ لِأَنَّ جَرِيرًا كَانَ مِنْ أَخِرِ مَنْ أَسْلَمَ كَانَ يُعْجِبُهُمْ يعني هذا الحديث لِأَنَّ جَرِيرًا كَانَ مِنْ مِنْ أَخِرِ مَنْ أَسْلَمَ This narration they used to, that the Salaf, they used to find this narration to be amazing and it's something that's very beneficial. And he mentioning here that Jarir ibn Abdullah al-Bajri radiallahu anhu, he witnessed the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam doing this. And uh, Ibrahim, meaning Ibrahim and Nakhai, rahimahullahu ta'ala, he says that they used to like this narration and find it to be something beneficial and amazing because Jarir, he was from the last of those to accept Islam. Meaning that Jarir uh, uh, radiallahu anhu, he accepted Islam after the revelation of the verse of Ma'idah. After the revelation of the verse of Ma'idah, and yani after the revelation of the uh, of the verse of Al Wudu, uh, Jarir he said he accepted Islam. An indication that this ruling of wiping on the on the Khufain, it, it remains and it's not abrogated. It remains and it's not abrogated. And he's from the last of them to accept Islam. Even he was asked about that, and he mentioned no, he that he didn't accept Islam until after the the revelation of. Uh, of this, uh, of the of the verse of al wudu of ayat al wudu, and he meaning that this is something that he witnessed and seen the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam doing even after this verse was revealed, an indication that it is uh, it is not abrogated, rather it's a it's a ruling that remains. Also, Ibn Abdul Bar rahimahullah ta'ala, he has mentioned a consensus about that, and as I mentioned before, Al Hassan al Basri rahimahullah ta'ala, he narrated that from seventy uh, from seventy of the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So therefore it's legislated. Now we have a question. Which one is more virtuous? Which one is better? Ayyuhuma afdal? Al ghaslu aw al masih? Al ghaslu aw al masih? Which one is better? Which one is preferable? Which one is more virtuous? Which one has a greater reward? Which one is more pleasing to Allah? Wiping, uh, washing the feet or wiping the feet? Washing the feet or wiping the feet? Everybody with me? Uh huh. Now, depends on the situation. Abu Wa'il, depends on the situation. What do you mean? If there's water, it's better to wash. If there's not water, huh? Any hardship, if there's a hardship, if there's a hardship to take off the socks, right. then it's better to, to wipe the socks. But if there's no hardship in taking off the socks, it's better to take off the socks. Is this what you're saying? Uh huh, yes. At the time when you make a do, uh -huh. you have the socks on, wiping is better. Uh huh. If you're off, you're washing is better. Ahsanta, this is the correct opinion that Allah knows best. And this is what Ibn Qayyim had mentioned. Rahimahullah ta'ala and likewise his teacher Shaykh Ud Islam ibn Taymiyyah Rahmatullahi alayhima That it goes back to the situation of the individual And this is what is found after observing and pondering over the evidences From the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam So if a person he's not wearing socks, if his feet are not covered Then it's best for him to wash And if his feet are covered meaning he's wearing socks then it's best for him to wipe so it's according to the person's situation. So a person, he will not take off his socks to wash and nor will he put on his socks to wipe. Whatever situation he's in, whenever he's going to make the wudu, if his feet are uncovered, he will wash them. And if his feet are covered, he will wipe on them. So this is, uh, this is the, 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 the answer to the question. Yani this is the answer to the question. So a person, he will not think that wiping, washing is better, so he will take off his socks. It's never been mentioned that the Prophet Sallallahu Wasallam, he would do this that he would take off his socks to wash. But rather what is mentioned that uh, many times that he would wash his feet. And this is whenever he uh, had the khufan. And then the other times whenever it's mentioned that he wiped, this is whenever he had the khufan. So therefore a believer, he will look at his, sir, he, look at, he will look at his situation. If he's not wearing socks, then he will wash his feet. And if he's wearing socks, then he will wipe on, on his socks. Then he'll wipe on his socks according to his situation. So there will be no takalluf here. There will be no takalluf here. We understand the point? When is it best to wash? If you don't have any socks on. So, it should, so, 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 should, so, so should somebody say, 
you know, it's a sunnah for the Prophet Sallallahu to wipe, so I'm going to put socks on. Uh, no, no, if you need to wear socks, you wear socks. And if you're doing that, you wipe on your foot and you take the ease and uh, you follow the sunnah. But if there's no need to wear socks, you don't wear socks. And here in America, many people, they wear socks. It's from the customs of the people in general to wear socks. But in uh, a lot of the Muslim lands, it's not from their customs to wear socks, except for maybe in the winter time. Except for maybe in the winter time. So any though, this is the case. If a person, if he's going about through his day and he's wearing socks, then he'll wipe on his, his socks. And he will not take him off to wash his feet every time he makes wudu. And if he's going about through his day he, and he's not wearing socks, then he'll wash his feet and he'll not put socks on just to, uh, to wipe on them. Just to wipe on them. So according to the person's situation. According to the person's situation. And, uh, and Allah knows best. So with regards to wiping on, uh, on the socks, with regards to wiping on the socks, this is allowed, but there are particular conditions and that, that the people of knowledge they have mentioned. There are particular conditions that the people of knowledge they have, they have mentioned to make it permissible to wipe on, on the socks. Shuruto ni jawaz al mas and the conditions that must be present in order for it to be permissible to wipe on the socks. So it's not allowed to just wipe on the sock without any conditions or without any restrictions or without any requirements. Rather, there are requirements. So we're going to discuss them uh, now bi ithnillahi ta'ala. So the first requirement is something that is re agreed upon. The first requirement and the condition and yalbasahuma ba'da kamal tahara ba'da kamal tahara So the people of Nala have mentioned in this manner that a person he will wear the socks, he will wear the khuf and he, we're talking specifically about the khuf after this we'll find that the Jorab has basically the exact same rulings. So he will put the khuf on after a complete tahara after making complete tahara after making complete tahara some of the people of knowledge they have went into details in this particular condition and derived a number of other conditions from that so we mention it in this manner then we mention the points that come along with it and either the the first condition is that a person he will not be able to wipe on the hoof until unless he puts them on after making complete tahara after making complete Tahara, meaning that he will make the wudu entirely in the manner that is proper, and then he will put them on after this. So this is something that is agreed upon. So this is something that is agreed upon. So whenever we say, uh, for example, what is intended by this بعد كمال الطهارة after complete tahara, then this would exclude certain uh, certain issues. And from that is if a person he were to make wudu, he's doing all of his body parts, and then he washes his right foot, and then he puts one khufan. And then he washes his left foot and he puts the other hoof on. Would it be allowed for him, based upon what we have just heard, to wipe on those, on those hoof? Huh? He, he's, he's making ablution. He's doing, he did his face and his hands and he wiped his head. He got to his foot, he did his right foot. He washed his right foot. Then he put the hoof on the right foot. Maybe it's cold outside, for example. He washed the right foot and then he put the hoof on the right foot. Then he washed the left foot. And then he put the hoof on the left foot. Did he put the, did he wear the 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 hoof, the the two hoof, the hoofain after complete tahara? No, he didn't wear it after complete tahara. So therefore, it's not going to be allowed for him to wipe. It's not going to be allowed for him to wipe. It has been collected by Bukhari and Muslim from the hadith of Al Mughira ibn Shu'bah radiyallahu anhu that he was with the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam one time and the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam tawadda. He made wudu. And then uh, Mughira, he says, So I went down to take off his khuf, his tuk, the two khuf from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he's helping him make the wudu. He's serving the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with the water and the likes in his evolution. So he says, so I went down to take off his, uh, off the khufain. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, he said, leave them, leave them, because I put both of them on while both of my feet were upon a tahara. So then after that, the Prophet Sallallahu wiped on them. So this is from the evidences of, of this sunnah and likewise from the issue here. So he said, da'huma fa'inni adkhaltuhuma tahiratain. And he, so Allah knows best, and he, what is intended is that we, I put both of them on while they're upon tahara. And he, all at the same time. All at the same time. So uh, this is... This is this particular point. So a person, he must make complete tahara, you know, cleansing every body part before he puts the, the hoof on, either foot, before he puts the hoofain on. Everybody with me on this point? Now, this is something that people are not as different about, but what is closest and what is best is to, is to follow this and to not, 
uh, oppose it. So he will not be allowed to wipe on both of the khuf until he washes the body parts properly, all of them. And he, ta- he performs the, the ablution properly and finishes entirely and then he puts the, the khuf on in that state, in the state of complete tahara. So, so this is what is intended here. So this is what is intended here and the evidence for that was the hadith of Mughira ibn Shu'ba radiallahu, uh, radiallahu anhu. So uh, likewise, what is meant by uh, complete tahara, yani at tahara they mention to verify as well, any of the wudu, they will say ba'd al-wudu, aw ba'da, yani at tahara al ma'iya after using water. So it wouldn't suffice for a, for a person to make tiyamum, if he, may, if he didn't have water, for example. If he didn't have water, for example, and, or he couldn't use water, then he, went, he made tiyamum. This type of tahara here is not going to allow him to wipe on his socks. It's not going to allow him to wipe on his socks. There's two points why. There's two points why. Who can find them? Uh-huh. Because whenever you make, ta- whenever you make tiyamum in the first place, there's no, you don't do anything with the feet. The feet are not included in here. So if the person is making tiyamum, there's absolutely no need to wipe on the feet in the first place. Whenever he makes tiyamum, as the brother, he read the verse over, before, he wipe his face in his hands with the dirt and this is it. He wipe his face in his hand with the, with the, with the clean dirt and, and then he's finished. And then he's finished. And so, the, so this is the first point. You need the wiping on the socks is not needed whenever a person is in the state of using it tiyamum. Yeah, of using it tiyamum and then also Likewise, uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he mentioned in a narration collected by Tirmidhi and other than him from the Hadith of Abi Dhar, that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Inna sa'idah tayyiba tahuru al-Muslimi wa in lam yajid al-ma'i ashra sinin. That the pure earth, the pure earth, the, poor, the pure ground, the pure dirt is the, means of, is the means for a Muslim to make purification, to make tahara, to make tahara if he does not find water for even 10 years. For, for 10 years, any meaning for a long time, if a person was in a situation where he did not find water, even up to, even for 10 years, then he could purify himself still with the clean earth. This is what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is saying here. But if he finds water, then he must touch his body with it, meaning he must use the water now, and this is good. So therefore a person, if he's making tayammum, in the first place while he's in the state of using tayammum, he doesn't have to wipe on his socks. And then likewise, if the water comes, it will not be allowed for him to use tayammum anymore. Rather, now he's going to have to make tahara properly. Rather, now he's going to, make, to have to make tahara properly. So that would require for him even to take off his socks and to put the ablution on, on, on all of his body parts and then put the socks back on. And then put the socks back on. So this is what uh, is mentioned here with regards to this. So a person, he has to put the socks on while he's upon complete tahara. Meaning that he had made the ablution entirely and he had finished from that and then he wore the socks. And then after that he wore, he wore the socks and then he wore the socks. So uh, a person uh, in this situation on putting on the socks, whenever a person is putting on the, uh, on the khufain, uh, either he's going to be, uh, if he puts on both of them, this is what is intended. A person he puts on, he, he makes the ablution completely he finishes that and then he puts on both socks. Now he's allowed to wipe on them. Now he's allowed to wipe on them. This is the one that we're, dis- that we're discussing. As for the person who is, uh, for example, he made the evolution completely and then he put on one sock. He put on one sock and his le- he put on one sock on his right foot, for example, and his left foot is, is, is uncovered with no sock on. His left foot is uncovered with no sock on and his left foot is fine. There's no ailment whatsoever. It's not allowed for him to wipe. It's not allowed for him to wipe. Brother, he has to have both socks on. It's not allowed for a person to wipe on the foot that's uncovered. And it's not allowed for a person to gather between wiping and washing. So he couldn't wear one sock and leave the other one uncovered and wipe on the one that's covered and wash the one that's uncovered. This is not allowed. Not to mention that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he forbade for walking in one shoe. And this is something that's makroom. That a person, he's either walking in both shoes or not walking in any shoes that he should walk in both shoes or not walk in any shoes. And this is something uh, the people of Nalazay they have mentioned that uh, the prohibition is similar to the prohibition of the qaza, the prohibition of the qaza. And likewise, the prohibition of sitting between the shade and the sun and in the pathways, in the pathways. There's a prohibition for all of these affairs. There's a prohibition here related to what we're discussing, walking in one shoe, 
walking in one shoe. Allah knows best, it could become the same, walking in one sock, and it could, to, could go along with that. All of this could be included. Even some of the people of Allah has mentioned wearing one glove. Ibn Hajar, he mentioned in Fath al-Bari, similar like this, and he wearing one glove. And he mentioned along with this, the Qaza'a, whenever a person who will shave part of his head and leave the other part unshaved. And then likewise, uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam prohibited from sitting in between the shade and the sun, and in the pathways outside. And he were, were a person who would sit directly in between the two. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said either sit in the sun or sit in the shade. Don't sit between the two. Had the majlis is shaytan. This is the place where the shaytan he sits. The people of not as I mentioned because this is the way of shaytan. The way of the devil is to be different and to oppose, to, to have one, one on and one off. Half is shaved, half of his off to be half in the light and half in the shade. And, and this manner like this. And we find uh, that this is a popular way for the disbelievers. They'll have one red sock and one blue sock. Uh, or one this and half, half of it on and half of it off. Half of a pants up and half of it down. Half of the shirt up and half of it down. Half of the head this way and half of the head that way. All of this the people of knowledge have mentioned from the likes of these narration that that's from the way of a shaitan. So we should be uh, aware of these affairs. This is from the light of the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Who would want to imitate the devil? What do you and this is what happens for a person whenever he opposes the guidance of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or whenever he's ignorant of the guidance of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he will, only, he will only wind up taking the devil as his role model. He will only follow and imitate the devil and the enemies of Allah Azza wa Jal because of this. So this is uh, something that's very important. In any case, if he were to do this, if he, he were to put on one sock and leave the other sock off, why there's no... While there's no uh, illness or any, any wound or anything in his other foot, he's not allowed to wipe until he wears both of them. Until he wears both of them. So this is uh, one of these issues here that we touch on. Likewise, uh, if, uh, a person he had, if a person he had only one foot, if he had only one foot, then uh, it's allowed for him to wipe then. And now he has an excuse. Now he has an excuse, a person if he had only one foot, and he meaning that one of his foot he had lost that. It's allowed for him to wear a sock on the foot that he has and to wipe on that one foot. Also, if a person he is wearing one sock and the other foot is, he's not wearing a sock, but it's because of a reason. Or if he's wearing a sock because of a reason and he's not wearing the sock because of a, of a reason. And he, for example, he has a sock on, he has a sock on or something. And he, uh, on, on his foot but not because he wants to wear the sock the other one is uncovered but he has the sock on because he has a weakness in his foot he has a deficiency in his foot or an ailment in his foot so now it, it will be allowed for him now it will be allowed for him because now the sock is not actually like a sock it's not really a khuf now it's going to take the ruling of of the jabira now it's going to take the ruling of the jabira of like a cast or a bandage because he has an ailment on his foot he has an ailment on his foot. So the person who had an ailment on one of his feet and then he had, and he wrapped his foot with something or he put a sock on in order to protect it. Now this sock is acting as a type of cast or a bandage or a means of protecting his ailment. And uh, therefore in this circumstance, he's excused. He'll be able to wash one of them and wipe the other one if that was his case. Uh, if that was his case. We understand this? Okay, so this is some of the points that people of not as they mentioned. This is all related to Ibsu Huma. بعد كمال الطهارة wearing them after having complete طهارة also from the conditions the people of not as they mentioned was ستر محل الفرض يعني that uh, the condition that the, the خف it must cover the, the place of the obligation of washing the place that's obligatory to wash on the foot all of it must be covered all of it must be covered what would that be? وارجو لكم إلى الكعبين so therefore, we have discussed this in our previous class, that the foot it has to be washed from the toes to the ankles, including the ankles. The toes to the ankles, including the ankles. All of that has to be washed, any whenever washing. All of that has to be washed whenever washing. So therefore, the hoof that's going to be worn, that would be permissible to wipe on, uh, it must cover that whole portion of the, of the foot. It must cover that whole portion of the foot. And this is because it would not be considered a hoof. It would not be considered a khuf any, if it did not cover this portion. And because it has come, likewise we have studied in uh, the chapter of Al-Hajj, that the uh, muhrim, he's not allowed to wear the khuf. The muhrim, he's not, he's not, the one who's in the state of Al-Ihram, he's not allowed to wear the khuf. In one of those narrations, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said that the muhrim, وَلَا يَلْبَسَ الْخُفَيْنِ إِلَّا أَنْ لَا يَجِدَ أَنَّ عَلَيْنِ فَلْيَلْبَسَ الْخُفَيْنِ وَلْيَقْطَعْ 
huma ha tahta al ka'bayn and uh, that uh, the the one who's in the state of ihram he can't wear the khufain rather he has to wear the na'lain he has to wear the sandals that are below the ankles and if he does not find the sandals that are below the ankles then he can wear the khufain but he must cut them until they're below the ankles and he must cut them until they're not considered the khuf anymore so after he cuts them, they're not considered khuf anymore. Whenever they're cut below the ankles, now they're considered to be like the na'al, like to, to be like the, the slippers or the sandal, to be like the slippers or the sandal. So this is from the evidences of that. And, then, and likewise, then he, so the khuf that was known in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it covered this portion of the foot. It covered the foot all the way up and it up to the ankle and it covered the ankle. And likewise, this is the, the place that's obligatory to be washed. So the people of Nara, they mentioned that this is from, uh, from the conditions. From the conditions of the khuf is that it must cover the entire foot, the entire portion of the foot that's an obligation to wash. That's an obligation to wash, meaning it must cover from the toes to the ankles, including the ankles. It must cover from the toes, including the ankles. So that which is below the ankles is not considered a khuf, based upon the narration that had preceded. Based upon the narration that had preceded, and likewise the understanding yani, uh, uh, of the khuf in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. As for in the case if the khuf it had uh, holes in it, if the khuf it had holes in it, they call this issue here al khuf al muharraq al khuf al muharraq the one that has holes in it, the khuf that has has holes in it. P possibly he has, for example, a, a hole in the bottom of the khuf, a hole in the bottom of the khuf, and therefore the bottom, the ball of his foot maybe will show. Is that a portion of the fard? Is that a portion of the fard? Any that. That, that's a portion that's supposed to be that's supposed to be washed, right? So now a portion of the farad is showing. Or if a person, he had a, a, a hole on the top of the khuf. For example, his big toe is poking out the top of the khuf. And he has big toe and there's a hole where the big toe is and now his big toe is popping out the top of the khuf. Huh? Is, it, is it an obligation to wash the big toe? No, whenever you don't have the khuf on. Is it an obligation to wash the big toe? Yes, normally it's an obligation. If there's no khuf, you have to wash the big toe. So that is part of the fard, yani with regards to the ghasr. So now it's showing. So now it's showing. So the people of Nara, they mention any this particular issue. So Allah knows best if it's something that is considered small or light or not something, any uh, showing uh, uh, half of the foot or uh, some of the people of Nara, as they mentioned, if it's still considered a khuf and he's still able to wear and the likes like this, then these small holes and the likes of them, they were not harmed, it's still allowed to wipe. And it's still, and it's still allowed to wipe. Yani al khuruq al mu'tada. Al khuruq al mu'tada. And this is because this is something that occurs normally. Normally, the people who wear the khuf, they will find that after some time, the, the khuf it gets a hole in it. Normally, the people who wear a khuf, or even people who wear socks likewise, they will find that after some time, that this particular garment, it gets holes in it. So this is something that is normal. And likewise, it is known that a number of the companions in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu they were poor. They were poor. And it's uh, only thought that uh, their uh, khifaf, which is the plot of khuf, their khifaf would have holes in them. They would have holes in them or they would have been exposed to, to getting holes in them. This is something that is known. So had that been a particular ruling, and he says it's something that is very common that the khuf normally after some time it will get a hole in it everybody's khuf gets a hole in it then since it's something that is well known and happens often and uh, then uh, if it had been an obligation the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam would have clarified that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam would have clarified that so there has been no clarification with regards to this so therefore allah knows best if there's a small hole on the on the on the sock inshallah it will not harm it will, not, it will not harm a person as, even if it's on yani the far, the place of the far, where the place where normally it, it is going to be washed when there's no sock there, the place that's an obligation to cover if it's something light or small and that occurs normally and the likes like this, inshallah, that will not harm wiping on the sock. Because the wisdom behind uh, wiping on the sock with a hole or without the hole is the same and that is to make it easy. That is any facilitation and not having to take off uh, take off the socks and he, and whenever, whenever a person he's making he's making uh, the evolution so this is another issue likewise from the conditions the people of not as they mentioned tahara to hima that the actual khuf itself it must be pure the khuf itself it must be it must be pure so tahara to hima the ain meaning the actual khuf itself it must be pure 
So, for example, if a person he had khuf that's made from the hide of a pig, then he would not be allowed to wipe on them because the hide of a pig is not pure. It's not pure. Or any other animal likewise, the hide of the other animals that is not, is not, that's not allowed to eat them and the likes like this, any ghayrul ma'qul al these uh, animals that uh, they are considered uh, najisa, that their hide is considered najis, then if uh, the hoof was made from them, then it would not be allowed to wipe on them because of the fact that they are impure. They are impure. The, 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 the substance, the hide itself is impure. So for example, the hide of a, uh, the hide of a, of a pig, the hide of the swine, you cannot wash it and clean it. It doesn't come clean. It doesn't come clean. So the najasa, the najasa is two different types. There's a najasa al ayniya or najasa al hukmiya. We'll discuss this inshallah on the next prince, on the next shart. Yani izara to najasa. So the najasa is two types. The najasa ayniya or najasa al hukmiya. Or there's something that's called a najis or something that's called al mutanajis. Something that's called najis, yani najasa ayniya. Something itself is impure. Itself is impure, like the hide of a, of a pig. Like the hide of a pig or like feces or urine. A person, he's not able to take a piece of feces at Karamukum Allah and clean it. It will not come clean. It remains impure. It remains impure. You cannot put water on it and wash it with soap and the lights like this and purify it. It doesn't become pure. Itself, itself is, is an impurity. It's an impurity in itself. So this is like the hide of the, of, of the pig. The hide of the pig is this type of impurity. It doesn't come clean. So therefore, a person, he can't put it on and wipe on it. It will not come clean. It's not, it's not allowed. It's not permissible. So this is, uh, this is uh, with regards uh, to this issue. This is with regards to this issue. So it's not allowed to wipe on uh, this type of hoof any with the consensus from the people of knowledge. Because wearing it in the first place is an action of disobedience. To wear an item that is made from something that is najis, something that is najasa, something that is impurity. For example, to wear any of these items from these hides of these animals that is impure. It's not allowed to wear them in the first place. It's not allowed to wear them in the first place. And uh, this uh, wearing the, the sock and wiping on it is a ruqsa. And he has a license. And from the ease and the religion of Allah Azza wa Jal. And it's not allowed to take the ease of Allah Azza wa Jal by way of disobedience. You need to disobey Allah Azza wa Jal in taking the ruqsa. This is something that is not permissible and not allowed. And likewise, the fact that this particular hide, it never becomes pure. It will, it will never be able to be purified. And likewise, also, it would, it's not allowed to pray in it in the first place. So he's wiping his feet, he's wiping his socks in order to prepare for the salah. And he can never pray. The salah will not be accepted if he's praying or if he's wearing uh, items that are considered najis, that are considered najis, or even if it has najasa on it. So this is the case. If the khuf itself is made from the likes of these uh, materials, then it's not allowed to wipe then it's not allowed to wipe. As for the case, if a person he had the, the khuf that is made from the hide of an animal that is tahir, and in the khuf itself is tahir, and then the, the person he stepped on some bowl, for example, he stepped on urine, or he stepped on feces, or he stepped on an impurity, and it got on the khuf, now this is not called najis, this is called mutanajis. It has become najis, and this is different, so this has the ruling. So this type of najis it can be removed. This type of najasa can be removed. So if this type of najasa was on the khuf and a person, he made wudu and they wiped on the khuf, would the wudu be proper? Uh, if a person, he stepped on, uh, on urine, for example, and then uh, he went to make wudu, the urine is on the bottom of his foot. Or if a, per, a child passed urine on, on, on that and then he made wudu. The question was if a person, he had... Uh, the khuf, the khuf that is made from something that is pure. I mean, it's a proper khuf. It's a proper and lawful khuf. And then some najasa got on the khuf. Some najasa, like urine, a drop of urine got on the khuf. Would it be allowed for him to uh, wipe on them before removing the najasa? No. No. Uh -huh. So here, so here, and he, what is would the had would the had be removed if he made wudu and then wiped on his khuf? Allah knows best. It's not the condition. We talked about this before. Uh huh. That was a different point, but similar. 
Huh? But we don't want to confuse yeah, the two of them. Yes, huh? The people of not, as I mentioned, for example, if somebody, if a child passed urine on the clothing, and then he made wudu, and then after that he cleaned the urine off the clothing, there's a there's an agreement that the wudu is good. The wudu is good, huh? If, if for example there was urine on a person's stove, and then he made wudu, and then after that he moved the urine off the stove, there's no disagreement that the wudu is good. He removed the hadith. He removed the hadith. So that was with regards to that. So the same issue here, and Allah knows best. And if he made wudu, he had uh, some impurity on his khuf, for example. He made wudu, and he wiped on the khuf. Insha'Allah, the wudu would be good. But he will not be allowed to pray. He will not be allowed to pray until he removed the impurities. Because removing the impurity is a condition of salat and not a condition of, of wudu. So we won't confuse this with the previous condition the author he mentioned about. Aristinja wa aristijmar qabalahu. Remember that? Aristinja or istijmar qabalahu. And that before before the wudu would be accepted, you have to make istinja or istijmar before that. And we mentioned that, for example, if a person he had uh, passed urine uh, and then he went and made wudu first and then came back and removed the najasa, made istinja, then he came back and made istinja. What was the ruling for his wudu? It's not, it's not, it's not correct. It's not correct. So what's the difference here? We mentioned the point then. What's the difference here? In the, in the previous point, the author, he mentioned the condition of istinja'un uh, istijmarun qabalahu. Yani qabala al-wudu. That you have, have to, you have to make istinja. You have to use water to remove the, the urine or the feces before, before, the, uh, before the wudu. So we said that if a person, he passed urine and he did not clean himself, then he made wudu. And then he came back and cleaned himself without touching his privates. He doesn't have wudu. The hadith will not be removed. Uh -huh. So he has to, if he uses the restroom, he has to remove the, if he passes urine, he has to use the water first and then go make wudu. And then go make wudu. But we said along with that, the, this issue here, and he, there's a difference between the two. Why is the ruling different? Ahsanta. Because the istinja, the reason for the istinja is, is, is the hadith. So this is not any najasa. When I've heard a person he makes istinja, this hadith that came, he's using, he's removing this najasa because of the hadith that came. So this najasa is related directly to the hadith. So it's, they, they're moved together. They must be removed together. So there's no other najasa or impurities like this one. So this najasa here is related directly to the hadith. So therefore it must be removed before the hadith is lifted. As for the other najasa, like this one in our example here, this is no, there's no hadith involved here. And he stepped on the urine, of, uh, the, the urine came onto his, onto his foot, and, he, and the likes like this, you understand that? So that's the, as for whenever a person he makes this tinja, then he's making a tinja because of the hadith. So that hadith that, that, that he has now is the reason why he's making a tinja. You understand? So therefore, that hadith is not going to be removed until he also removes that particular najasa because they're related together. They're related together. So there's no other uh, najasa uh, that has the same ruling like this, except for the one that comes at the time of making the hadith. So therefore, they're connected together. As for the other najasa, they don't have that ruling. They don't have that ruling. So based upon that, and Allah knows best, if a person, he has some impurity on his khuf, and then he may wudu and wipe on his khuf, the wudu will be proper, but he cannot pray yet. He has to remove the najasa because removing the najasa is a condition for the salah and not a condition for wudu and not a condition for wudu and uh, and Allah knows best and uh, and Allah knows best. So these are some of the main conditions uh, with regards to uh, the permissibility of wiping uh, on the khuf. After this, we have conditions for the correctness of wiping. Inshallah, we take them uh, tomorrow. Adabu sallallahu alaihi wasallam. وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم. We try to take it all tomorrow, inshallah.